Good afternoon, everyone. How are you today? My name is Miss Heather. I'm the Early Literacy Programming Specialist here at the Enoch Pratt Free Library. And we have a super fun and special program for you today. We are with Wild Miss Val from Wildlife Adventures. And she's going to be showing us what different animals do in the winter. That's going to be so cool. I'm so excited to learn about what different animals do in the winter. I know what I do in the winter. It's hide under the blanket. <laughs> um, before we get started with this program, on January 29th, we're going to be celebrating the new, new year. Um, we will have turtle dance music live at Southeast Anchor Branch, but we will also be streaming virtually so you can watch him perform as well as participate in our countdown to noon. All of our branches have take and make kits that you can pick up that include a crown and a little noisemaker. So make sure you do that to celebrate the new year with us. More information can be found at prattlibrary.org. And now I'm going to turn it over to Miss Val. Hello, friends. How are you doing? Happy winter. Today is the first entire full day of winter after the winter solstice that happened yesterday. So the days, yesterday was the shortest day of the year. And the really good news for people that don't like the cold is that the days are going to get longer and longer and longer. So we're going to, we're heading towards warmer weather but we have to get through some cold weather first and the animals have to get through it as well and it can be a little tough for them and that's what we're going to talk about how do the animals survive in the winter now the one animal that you see all winter long are birds how many of you feed the birds you put out some seed for them so they can get through the winter and i've often wondered when i was younger maybe your age how do the birds stay warm especially when it's super duper cold we have some birds here to show you you might know what they are when you hear them can you hear them and we will talk about how they survive Cass is here with me She's going to hand me the animals. Looks like I'm just magically getting the animals. Oh, here. Did you hear that one? Cass is going to get her out. You can stand stand up behind me, Cass, a little bit. Right in front of here, if you can. Or there we go. We have some ducks for you. That's right. You see the, the one I'm holding is which one? Is it the girl duck or the boy duck? Yes, I have the male duck or the drake. He's got the green head and the pretty breast and Cass has the girl duck or the hen. You can tell also, by the way, they quack because he has a funnier quack. It's very quiet. Quack, quack. And she has a very loud quack, 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 quack that she does. Boy, she's ready to go, isn't she? How do ducks stay? She's waving to you. Do you see her waving? Hello. Hello, friends. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So she's waving with those feet that help her to swim. Check it out. Here, let's show the feet. Can you get closer? Look at those webbed feet, right? The feet are all naked, but they have the skin on them that helps them to swim. She is really waving that foot. But what do the ducks have that help them in the winter? Hmm. They have a couple of winter coats. Let's check it out. Are you ready? Hold on, Mr. Duck, you're fine, you're fine, it's okay. He's a little bit nervous today, isn't he? Relax, relax, okay, here we go. I'm gonna get close to the camera so you can see his first winter coat is down at his skin. Look at that, do you see those fluffy feathers? Those are called downy feathers and they keep him warm, toasty warm in there all winter, see? So he's got those nice downy feathers and then these feathers on top keep him nice and warm and they kind of trap the air in there so that everything stays warm. So he'll fluff up his feathers a little bit if he gets super cold in order to stay warm. Now these feathers, these body feathers, I have a funny name for them. I call them raincoat feathers because you know what? He can never get wet. If these downy feathers get wet, he's not going to survive. Or the hen, she won't survive. So, so 
what, how does that work? Wait a minute. Ducks live in the water. So how does that work that they can't get wet? That's where the body feathers come on. Let's do an experiment. Are you ready? I'm going to stand up. See if I can do it so you can see it. I'm, maybe Cass, bring the girl duck in front here because she's brown. She's easier to see. Yeah. Hold her so I can pour some water on her back. Turn her around. Can you turn her so she's so she's, her head is facing you? Yeah, her head is facing you. Here we go. Here we go. And then hold her kind of level. And we're going to try to get her wet. She's being, she's not doing very good. Here, we're getting her wet. Ah! We got my table wet. We got, did it. We got the chair wet. I think we got Cass a little bit wet. Let's try it with him, too. Let's see if he's got good body feathers. Oh, my heavens. Do you see that water dripping? Look. It's, there's, hold on. There's only a couple drips of water on him. Everything else ran right off. So those feathers keep them dry. And they keep them, because they're dry, they're warm. Isn't that fun? Oh, my golly. So, yeah. And feathers, what else do feathers do? <laughs> I know what you're doing. You're flapping your arms because feathers help birds to fly. Go on, flap your wings, flap your wings. No. Like, no. Oh, like, no. <laughs> She's going to fly away. <laughs> she's really, he's, he's not flapping as good as she. Wow, she must be a good flyer. So the wing, these big wing feathers help them to fly. Look at that. Now, shall we show them? The blue eyes. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that behind. She has a special color on her. Do you see how it looks blue and green? And it looks like eyes. When she flies, she tries to turn into a blue-eyed monster so that... Move out of the way a little bit, Cass, so we can look behind you. So old Mr. Fox doesn't get them. He has it, too. Let me show you really quick, and we'll get on to another animal. He's better keep there we go. Look at that. Yeah, and the bottom of his feathers look like teeth, his tail feathers. So that's another way that animals survive with their color. Oh, speaking of color, that gets us right into the next animal. I think Cass is going to take the ducks out because woo, ducks are stinky animals. So she's going to do that while I get the next animal out. Make it take them. Thank you. Cass. Oh my gosh, you made a mess. <laughs> Here we go. This one is a favorite. What do we have here? Oh, we have the rabbit. Look at that rabbit. This is Coco Bean. Coco Bean is not a wild rabbit, but she looks like one. And she has big ears. Let's look at her ears. Look at the rabbit ears. So rabbits, to survive, have big ears. They're excellent listeners. Big back feet so they can hop if they see danger. They're very fast. They kind of zoom away. And she is very good at zooming to get away. All right. And they do something else that's really cool that I'm going to um, show you in a minute. Now, the rabbits do not hibernate. Some people might think, oh, they hibernate. They do not hibernate all winter. They will find a warm place under a pile of leaves or... Um, a brush pile or something like that to hide, but they um, are not going to be sleeping all winter long. They're going to be out looking for food. Yeah. And then some animals like the one behind me, didn't you see that fox back there? He's going to be out looking for her too. Now the animal, the rabbits around here will stay this nice brown all year long. Okay. But I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you what happens to some rabbits in other places. Hold on a second and I will show you what happens. Here we go. Okay. Oh, and then I've got my favorite. Hold on. Here it is. Look at that. Here you can see the rabbit in the summer on the bottom. He's all brown. Do you see that? Because he's going to blend in with the grasses and the weeds and the snowshoe hair. That's who this is. In the winter, look at his color. Because there's snow on the ground all of the time, 
he's going to turn into a white rabbit. Isn't that cool? That way he blends in with the snow. And you know, it's very difficult to see when it's snowing. So I'm going to show you my absolute favorite, I mean, the most amazing animal fact I have ever learned. Here we go. The Arctic reindeer, you know, it's almost Christmas. The reindeer have to pull the sled. The Arctic reindeer in the summer, their eyes are brown. And in the winter, they turn blue. Look at that. This one's kind of purple. And then on this picture, they're kind of blue. And that helps them to be able to see in the snow. So they can see that rabbit so they don't accidentally step on it. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's my absolute favorite animal fact, that their eyes turn blue in the winter. I must stop sharing so you can see the rabbit again. Isn't that cool? Yes, I just think that's so amazing. Is that an animal's eyes change color. Their fur changes color and their eyes change color. Wow. Yes. So those reindeer have to be able to see. Now, this is the rabbit that lives around here where we live is called a cottontail rabbit, the eastern cottontail. And why is he called a cottontail rabbit? Hmm, what do you think? I bet you're saying, because his tail looks like a piece of cotton. Look at that tail. Looks like somebody went boop with a piece of cotton right there. Look at that cute little tail. Now the tail, is a way to flash to alert other animals if they're dan there's danger. So the white-tailed deer has this. A lot of animals have this, and it's a way to help them survive and help other animals survive. So that is our rabbit. I, I wish you could touch and feel how soft this little rabbit is. And it's got, look at that. It's got nice soft fur. Do you like soft things? I have another soft animal to show you. Would you like to see another soft animal? All right, let's get out. Now, this bunny is very, very soft, but the next one is even softer. Oh my heavens, and it's Rosie, yay! Rosie the chinchilla. Look at Rosie, can you believe it? Look at how cute she is. Hold on a second. She's got big ears like the rabbit, doesn't she? Wow, they're kind of wide and round. And she's got super thick, beautiful fur. And she's got big back feet like the rabbit. Do you see her feet? Yeah, so she's a good hopper. That's what that tells us. And look at this funny tail. She has a long tail. Let's see if I can make it. Oh, look at that tail. It's spinning. The tail's going wild. The tail helps her. The rabbit that we just looked at had a little cotton tail. He lives on the ground. The chinchilla with this long tail lives on the rocks, on the trees. She can climb because she has the long tail to help her to balance. Okay, Rosie, don't leave me. She's getting fur all over me. Look at my, my vest is getting all full of her fur. All right, speaking of her fur. It's three layers. It's kind of like wearing three winter coats. So she lives, she loves cold weather. She lives where it's cold. Look at that. Oh, it's still. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can part her hair. It's very difficult to like get down there. Hold still, Rosie. Okay, I know, I know. Hold still, that girl. So you can see, I'm trying to show you her skin, and I can't even get down to the skin because her fur is so super thick. Look at that. Some people say when you touch it, it feels like you're touching a cloud. It's very, very soft. Yeah. So they live where it's very, very cold in the top of the mountains, uh, the Andes Mountains in South America. So they are used to the cold and they are prepared for the cold with this three layers of fur to keep them warm. Yeah. And now they have to keep that fur soft and fluffy because just like the duck, 
they have to have air going in there, you know, to keep her keep her warm, to keep fluffed up with air. And if it gets too dirty, it won't fluff up enough. Kind of like when we are playing and playing and we don't take a bath and our hair gets all mad and then we take a bath and our hair fluffs up. She needs to take a bath to keep this hair fluffed up. Problem is, it's cold all the time where she lives. So not bath in water is not going to work. And a, and, a, and a bath, you know, in the rain is not going to work. And she doesn't really lick herself that much for a bath. She's got a lot of fur. You know what she does? She rolls in the dust. She takes a dirt bath. She rolls. Right. Did you know you can take a dirt bath? <laughs> she rolls in the dirt. And that fluffs up and cleans her fur so that it will be nice and soft and fluffy and keep her warm and keep her dry. Look at her whiskers. That's one of the things I love about Rosie, these long, long whiskers. Ooh, they're so long. And they help her because she's out at night, which means she's, do you know the word? Nocturnal. Very good. She's nocturnal. And she uses these whiskers to measure a hole. So if she wants to go in a hole, her whiskers will tell her by touching the edges of it if she can fit. So that's why she has such long whiskers to measure so she can get away from danger and get in a hole. Yeah. Now, Rosie is a lot of fun. And she was, um, she goes out a lot of times when I go to bookstores or libraries. So you'll have to watch for that. Because I think in January, we might be going to a bookstore in um, Baltimore City called Snug Books. Yeah. So we love to come out. Here you go. And oh. And show you the animals. I have now I have one hopping around. Uh, now I'm covered in her fur. She will drop her fur in order to get away. So if she thinks she can get away from me by dropping her fur, she will. So every time I hold her, I'm covered in her fur. What should we do next? Oh, I have another mammal. You want to see another mammal? Now this guy. He is, he's not going to do well in the winter. He can't survive in the winter. And I'll show you why. Are you ready? Oh, my heavens. Oh, golly. Here, I need the other one. <laughs> he doesn't have a thick fur coat. No. Can you, can you give me a word to describe this fur coat? This is actually his hair. Okay, and it is not soft. No, we know it's not soft. It is sharp. Yes, definitely sharp hair, isn't it? Whoa, prickly, spiky. All of these words describe the hedgehog's hair. Now, if you look really closely, you can very easily see his skin between his spines. His hair is called spines. And you can tell that, see his skin, that, that those spines are not meant to keep him warm. Those spines are meant to keep you or me or a dog or um, a raccoon or a lion from eating him. And it works for all of what I said. The lion is afraid of the hedgehog. Okay, animals don't want to put their tongue on that just like you wouldn't put your tongue on that. Or I wear gloves or even my hand. It's going to hurt, right? Yeah. So the hedgehog lives in Africa in areas where it's very warm. So he doesn't have to do anything in the winter because it's warm all year round. They also live in England and Germany. Um, where it does get cold and they hibernate. Do you know what that means? Yes, it's when they sleep all winter long in order to preserve energy. Their body slows down and they just kind of, they don't need food because their body's not going at full, uh, in a full process. Let's look at his face. So that's what the hedgehogs do. Oh, there he is. This is Pee Wee the Hedgehog. 
Say hello to Pee Wee. There you can see his feet all rolled up. And his little eyes. Do you see his ears? Get him closer. Yeah. And his little nose. He's got a pointy nose. Do you know what that hedgehogs eat? Pointy nose animals all eat the same thing. Oh, he's going to hide again. Oh, come on. Come back out. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Pointy nose animals do. Because he's got a great sense of smell. He can eat or smell. I'm sorry. He can smell worms and bugs, even if they're underground. So that's what he eats. He's searching for bugs under the hedges or under the bushes and in the ground. And he can smell them and hear them, even if they're not, even if they're underground. Isn't he cute? He's soft on the inside, but I never get to touch that very much because he rolls up. He thinks I'm going to hurt him. I'm not going to hurt you, Pee Wee. All right, Pee Wee. I'm going to put, I'm going to switch my camera and we'll put Pee Wee in this little thing and we'll see if we can watch it. We'll see if he'll walk around a little bit. That might be fun. Let's see if he'll walk and we can watch him come out and walk. Let's see. No, face the camera, Pee Wee. Here we go. Maybe I should have put a worm in there. There you go. You can see his little face. Yeah. He's scared. I have to be really quiet. Even if I talk, it scares him. Do you hear his little hiccup? That's his first warning. You hear that sound and you know not to go and touch him. Oh, Pee Wee, you're so nervous. <laughs> He's really nervous. All right. So when you pat him, you have to pat him very gently like this. And see, he jumps every time to try to poke me. Ow! To try to poke me with his spines. And that's how he survives. Oh, Pee Wee. Okay. Oh, my heavens. He is not happy that I was touching him. All right. We'll go back to the regular camera. So right, let me get Pee Wee up again. Oh, still so nervous. So, yeah. So Pee Wee is a mammal. And a lot of mammals do um, hibernate in the winter in order to survive. Um, so we want to show the... Did you bring the ferrets up? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have another one that. More is, mammals. Yeah. One more we're going to do real quick and not talk about a lot, but they're kind of a neat mammal. And one of the only animals that aren't afraid of the hedgehog are these guys, the ferrets. Yeah. The ferrets. Now the ferrets have to hibernate because they have a very short digestive tract. But when they hibernate, they actually will store food. They will actually go out and grab as much food as they can, like a squirrel, and they will store it so that they can eat through the winter. They're not going to be hibernating and not eating all winter. They're going to have to eat at some point because, oh, they're going all over me. They're falling off. He's falling off my shoulder. He's a little large. And then this one wants to get down. So they live in the western part of the united states in the wild these are pet ferrets but the the um, wild ones are very endangered and they live in um out west and if you would like to learn more about them if you have to do a, a school report on an animal check out the black-footed ferret they have a very interesting story which i'm not going to get into a lot here of why they're endangered but you need to check it out because it's really cool. Oh my gosh. And they are kind of stinky animals. They're related to the skunk. They're in the mustelid family and they have to go and find food. Now, pet ferrets don't have to store food because we give it to them. So you know what they do? They run around the house and they, um, they steal, um, well, this one steals shoes and Freddy here is Walter. Walter steals shoes and Freddie here, he steals pens. <laughs> so they steal them and take them. And they do take food sometimes and try to hide it. So, um, see, they're kind of squirmy. They want to get down and play. Um, I need Cass to come back and take them. And because they are, they are ready to go. <laughs> they're not going to stay with me. She's going to let them play. And they'll go around and see what, what they can find to be ready for winter. 
All right. Oh, I have some more cool animals for you. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is something that a lot of people are happy about winter coming that we don't have a lot of animals that we have in the summer. What do we have in the summer that we don't have in the winter? Hmm. And people are happy about it. Let me get him out. Hold on a second. I got to climb over here and get him. Oh, sorry. I knocked my thing. This animal is one. He's so cool. He's one of my favorites. He will not be around in, can you see him? In the winter. This is a millipede and he is going to have to go into hibernation in the winter. Look at him. Now a millipede is a cool guy. He doesn't bite. Okay. And he's a bug with not a million legs, not a thousand legs, but a lot of legs. Let's see if I can get him to walk on me. Because when he walks on me, he's, he's not walking a lot. He's kind of sniffing around. I might have to put him down and see if we can get him to walk. Can you see him? Oh, I wasn't holding him up high enough. There's his head with the little antenna. And do you see the sections of his body? For each body section, he has two legs on each side. So for each body section, he has four legs. So in order to find out how many legs exactly that he has, we have to count his body sections and then multiply it by four. Yeah. So I haven't done that. So I can't tell you how many legs he has. I'm not going to take all the time. Look at how those legs move. Isn't that cool? It's like a wave. Now, a lot of people don't like animals like this. They don't like bugs. They don't like insects. They don't like spiders, but you know what this guy does? He doesn't bite. He gets in the leaves and he eats them and he composts the leaves. So he breaks down the leaves to dirt. Okay. So he's a good guy because he, oh, look at him looking around because he's a decomposer. Maybe I'll put him down. Oh, he's trying to poop on me. That's the other problem with these things. They kind of go on you. All right, let me put him down and share the camera. Let's see um, if we can watch him move down here. See if he'll move down here. Let's see if I'm not holding him. Maybe you can, maybe he'll move a little faster. I don't know. I don't know if that's better. Here, I'll move it closer to the camera. I know you want to see him close. He's a pretty neat guy. There we go. That's kind of cool. Looks like a train, doesn't he? <laughs> That's so neat. So again, these guys are decomposers, so they're not going to hurt you. Probably shouldn't pick up bugs if you don't know what it is, because some of them bite. There's one that looks like him. It has less legs, called a millipede, and they do have kind of an icky bite. But the, um, I'm sorry, a centipede. The centipede has a bad bite. The millipede is the one that doesn't and that's what this is always oh, we're not we're not focusing we're too close all right let me put this down and we'll switch our camera back so we can get on to reptiles there you go so he's kind of cool i like him i wanted to show him to you i thought you might enjoy seeing a bug that hibernates as they all do in the winter now, if it gets warm out for a day or two, you might start to see them flying around again. But when it's cold, they're not. And they'll be under the bark of the tree or in a wood pile, different places like that in order to stay warm. Can you take that, Cass? All right, let's get on to the reptiles. Oh, the ones that everybody loves. You've probably seen them crossing the road. Ooh. <laughs> Here he is. It took him a minute to get out. The turtle. Why did the turtle cross the road? Because he left his shell phone on the other side. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. Here we go. We have two turtles. Now, my turtles, 
do not hibernate. But wild turtles right now are hibernating. You are not going to see wild turtles out. They have found, they have dug under the ground a couple feet, or they're in a brush pile, or they're um, in a wood pile. They are somewhere where they can, can stay kind of warmish and hibernate. Okay, so these guys, I keep them warm all winter uh, because we do programs all winter. So they don't hibernate. That's why they're awake. The other day I had gotten them out and they were too cold and they weren't even opening their eyes. So these are box turtles. This is the male box turtle. Look at his eyes. They're red. And this is the female box turtle. Look at her eyes. They are brown. That's one way to tell the difference. And then his are red. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So they're called box turtles because I'm going to have to put her down because I can't do this with two hands. That's too much. Okay. Because they have a hard shell. Can you hear it? It's like knocking. Want to want to think. They never come out of their shell. Their shell grows with them. Look at this. This is the backbone right here. So it grows as they grow and they shed like one little piece will shed. Each scoot, it's called, each section is a scoot. Each one peels when they shed. So that's kind of a cool um, way that they grow. And this guy, you know, it's hard to tell how old they are. A lot of people wonder about that. Oh, man, no, Dean. Um, some people say you can count the rings like the rings of a tree. Can you see that? It's staying in focus pretty well. Okay. But the problem is as they get older up here at the top, the rings will start to wear off. So at first they were saying that's how you do it, but they're not so sure that that really works. But this guy is probably about 30 years old. Yeah. They can live to be very, very old. Did you think 30 years was very old? No, 30 years is not very old. What's an age that is super, super old? Now, not ancient, like a 1,000 or 2,000. But for a turtle, a box turtle, 100 years old. He can live to be 100 years old. That's very old even for a person. And for a wild animal to live that long, that is super old for them as well. Look at that. There he goes. He's always going somewhere. I think he's going to look for dinner. He loves to eat worms. He loves to eat strawberries. He loves to eat carrots. Some of the stuff you like, right? Except for maybe not the worms. He loves to eat slugs Ooh, and any of the bad bugs in your garden. Now we were talking about, I said that why did the turtle cross the road? In the summer, you'll see them crossing the road. Make sure you help them get your parents to make sure there's no cars coming. But take them where they're going, and you can save a turtle's life by taking him where he's going when he's crossing the road because he's very determined. The turtles are super determined, and they're going to go that way. If that's the way they want to go, it doesn't matter if you turn them around. He's going to still go that way. <laughs> so make sure that you take them that direction and help them off the road. He looked like a rock on the road. And then your parents might not know and they can easily get hit by a car. So these are our box turtles. And like I said, they are hibernating right now. I have another animal to show you that is also hibernating right now. And some people would probably be really, really happy about that. You think? Cass, can you get the uh, corn steak out for me? It's this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's that one. And we have one to show you. It's one of my favorites. It's very pretty. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Look at those colors. Oh, we're going to talk about color too after we show him. So the corn snake has beautiful colors. Nice reds and orange. And look underneath. Oh, wow. Look at that. Black and white. Isn't that pretty? 
And you will not find these guys out right now. They are also hibernating, finding a place. Sometimes they'll go in the rocks in, and a whole bunch of them will go in together and hibernate in a big, huge group. And even different snakes, will, different bre uh, species of snakes will hibernate together. Um, if they find a good spot, they'll all kind of go in there. So they are pretty cool animals and they do have to hibernate because reptiles, how do reptiles get their body heat? How do they do it? From the outside air, from the sun and the air, the air is too cold. So if it's, uh, let's see, if it's 50 degrees outside, the snake's body temperature is 50 degrees. If it's 40 degrees outside, the snake's body temperature is 40 degrees. If it's 30 degrees outside, whew, the snake's body temperature is going to be 30 degrees, which is frozen. So he can't control his body temperature. The outside air does it. That's why he has to hibernate so that he can survive the winter. He's starting to move and move and move. Oh, should I put him down and we'll change the camera so you can watch him move a little bit? He'll move better on the down here than in my hand. Hey, there you go, guy. Why are you turning it over? Turn it over. There we go. There we go. Let's back him up so you can see his face. See what kind of letters he makes. Snakes are good at making letters. This one I call Oriole because I took him to a birthday party and I put him down on the ground and he made the perfect Oriole O. He's not going to do it now. It was so cool. He made the Orioles O logo. So that's how he got the name Oriole. And he's orange. There he goes. He's probably looking for some food. Can you tell me what he eats? I'll bet you know. They don't eat ice cream. Did somebody say ice cream? They don't eat mac and cheese. I, I think somebody said mac and cheese. No, they don't eat hot dogs and hamburgers either. They have little eyes and their tongues are always sticking out because that helps them to smell for their dinner. And they eat mice and rats. That's what they like to eat for dinner. I need to pick one out. Okay. Yeah, that is what they like to eat. So he's looking around trying to find that mouse. All right. Now I have another one. I want you to be able to see the face and the, and the tongue up closer. So I have a bigger one. Here we go. Take this one. Here you go. All right. Here it is. Wait a minute. I got to get the pillowcase off of him. All right. Let me get it so I can get closer. This is a ball python. Well, he's called a ball, you know, like a ball rolled up in a ball he's not rolling usually they stay kind of in a ball but he's not staying in a ball <laughs> look at that all right i want to get him close so you can see his face can you see his tongue yeah there we go see that tongue come on put your tongue out there we go see so that tongue helps him to find dinner because he can't see very well he can't see very well in the wild show your face you're not gonna put your tongue out he ate recently, so he might not be hungry. That's cool. So, yeah. So, all right. Can you get him up there close? There we go. Isn't he pretty, though? He's from Africa in the wild. That's where he lives in the wild. And he lives where it's warm all the time as well. So, he doesn't have to worry about, there we go. There's his, there's that tongue coming out. Now he's looking around. I can't get it close, though. I wanted to get it really close. There we go. That's kind of neat. You wouldn't get this close if I was in person. I wouldn't let you get that close to the snake's head. So that's kind of fun that you get to see him always right at the camera. <laughs> He's looking right at the camera. And then you get to see him really, really close. Oh, my heavens. That's funny. Woo. Okay. Well, we're going to put him away. And I just want to tell, talk one more thing. Here you go, Cass. Take him for me, please. I just want to show you one more cool thing. There's an animal behind me. Do you see him behind me? Do you see that animal behind me? That's an animal that you're going to see a lot in the winter, especially if you ride out to the country. And look at his color. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you a little really short 
video and I want to, I want you to tell me, or I want you to look and decide what color you see on this little, the main color that you see on this little video I share. Let me find it. Here we go. Here it is. Okay. Watch this. It's not very long. Look at the colors. See all those colors in the sky? There's the evening sky. What colors do you see when the sun is setting and when the sun is coming up? There we go. Yes, you saw orange and red, beautiful colors. Now let me get him and bring him closer. This is our red fox. Now this guy was alive, but he's not alive now. But look at the colors on him. He has the colors of the sunset because that's when he's hunting and trying to find those rabbits or maybe some birds or ducks to eat. So he can hide by hunting when the, when the color is very red in the sky in the morning and at night. And that's what the red fox does. And you may see the red fox. Look at his fluffy tail. He got a fluffy tail and a beautiful red coat. And you may see one um, running around. Because you see them a lot in the winter, probably more than in the summer because uh, they're looking for food. They're out around looking for food. Now, if you see a fox and it's in your backyard or you're out hiking and you see one, and he looks at you and he doesn't run away. Does he want to be your pet? I hope you're shaking your head now. No, 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 no. They don't want to be your pet. They're always wild animals. You don't go up and try to pick them up because if they don't run away, something's wrong. They're sick. So they, you'll see them, but they will always run away from you. I want you to remember that. Now, this guy was hit by a car, probably like, I hate to say it's this long, but probably like 50 years ago. And he was found and then mount. This is called a live mount. So it looks like he's alive, but he's not. But I wanted to show him to you because I thought it was kind of cool that um, how his color is the color of the sunset. Did you enjoy seeing all these animals and learning about winter? And do you remember the favorite and most magical fact that I told you about the reindeer's eyes? Share that with someone else this Christmas. And you, because, you know, reindeer are magical anyway. So now you even have a real magical reindeer fact to share. All right. I hope you enjoyed seeing all these animals. And I hope that you have a fabulous safe and wonderful Christmas. And don't forget to hit the library for some awesome Christmas books. Thank you so much, Miss Val and Wildlife Adventures. And thank you, Mr. Tim, for interpreting today. We had a blast. I'm so glad we got to learn about all of those fun animals. Um, and thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye. Bye.